Hey guys, Michael here. Well, it has finally arrived. Is Naughty Dog's newest game blandly exploring war and territory, or is it raising the bar for games as a whole? We'll find out here in this review of The Last of Us for the PS3. After one of the most striking openings in recent memory that succinctly sums up the upcoming tones and themes, we are dropped into the life of Joel, two decades after the initial fungal outbreak. He's a grizzled man struck by immense loss and forced to uncomfortably live with scarce resources, but he has quickly met with an ultimatum. A friend offers him a deal to escort a young girl, Ellie, to a militia group in exchange for a stash of weapons. We're smuggling her? The narrative strengths are multifaceted, but one of the most striking aspects is the performances given by the actors. Joel and Ellie both deliver their dialogue with incredible conviction and emotion and, due to the marvelous animation, is thoroughly conveyed to the player. Subtle facial movements and small gestures mix perfectly with the superb acting and only reinforce the game's astronomically high level of performance capture. The many side characters are just as well realized, but Joel and Ellie steal the show. The whole game has an impeccable script, one that captures a wide array of emotions. More often than not, when the term emotions is used, it usually narrow-mindedly pinpoints the more dramatic or sad sides of human relations in hope to capture a more grounded, serious tone. The Last of Us utilizes those dark tones brilliantly, but it also intelligently makes use of the whole gamut of feelings and emotions. Happiness, pity, shock, love, hate, and despair are among the feelings exhibited by the dialogue in situations at hand. Even though they all individually have a gold star level quality to them due to the script masters at Naughty Dog, the way in which they weave together is the truly remarkable task. Because the actors have such a realistic collection of emotions and appropriately grow throughout the journey, it makes them more believable and interesting as characters. When brought together with the unrivaled acting and outstanding pacing, the game keeps going and never lets up, urging you to keep trekking on. All of this desperation leads to an ending which feels right by going against the grain and attaining that elusive satisfying finale that games usually mishandle. Gameplay can usually be mishandled too, but The Last of Us bucks most conventions and melds a gameplay experience all its own. In a tense economic world where action is the focal point of most games, The Last of Us places the survival based nature enforced by the world and plot and lets it bleed right into the gameplay. Ammunition and provisions are limited and scattered throughout each broken down locale, making scavenging and crafting a necessity just to get by. Creating makeshift bombs, health kits, Molotov cocktails, and other tools makes you really feel like you are surviving, and since crafting happens in real time, you always have to watch your ass in this dangerous world. Hurry, Joel. Watching your ass becomes a full-time job since you aren't given the liberty of lackadaisically dumping clips into enemies. Because of this, encounters become naturally more strategic. Instead of making yourself known, carefully and quietly picking up foes can help even the odds when they are usually stacked against you. Stealth isn't forced, but greatly encouraged since the game's difficulty and high damaging opponents can make waste of you fairly quickly. Approaches can differ depending on the faction you are facing off against. Undead-like infected called runners function like nearsighted zombies and use a horde-like mentality to try to kill the player. However, things get more interesting with the clickers, which are far more deadly. These ugly fungus creatures have lost their eyesight due to a longer lasting infection, but can kill Joel in one hit if he wanders too close. It's a bold design choice, but it works because it allows them to be an extreme threat and lets them become something to be actually terrified of. They aren't impossible to take care of, but they can punish you if you are ill-equipped or just plain sloppy. When all of these different types of infected are mixed together, it can make these encounters adrenaline-based, nail-biting, tests of skill, or tense, scary situations, depending on the context. Fighting humans has some similarities, but they are different beasts. Humans are naturally more intelligent and require more planning and grit to conquer. Stealth is once again encouraged, but any approach displays the incredible AI found in The Last of Us. Using a group mentality, they'll attempt to flank you or sneak around, even calling out your specific location when they spot you. However, the lack of a binary alert system is the most impressive. Instead of always knowing where Joel is hiding, foes can lose track if you run away or quietly move around. This allows every encounter to be a blissful combination of stealth, shooting, and running away, making each fight different and very flexible. No skirmish feels the same, and the sense of cobbling together an improvised plan allows the playing part of The Last of Us to be a tense yet incredibly satisfying experience. The only slight flaw is some of the friendly AI doesn't get spotted, but given that it would be frustrating if they did get spotted, it makes it an acceptable compromise.
As if it was any surprise, The Last of Us is gorgeous in every sense of the term. Naughty Dog has truly molded the PS3 into producing high quality visuals that best anything else seen in the console market. Textures are impressive, the lighting is phenomenal, and the density of each locale is quite noteworthy, especially when the meticulousness of each small fixture is taken into consideration. As much as these environments are wonderful to gaze upon, they do more than act as pretty window dressing. In a world ravaged by destruction and chaos, the way nature has taken its course over these abandoned man-made structures is oddly attractive. This destruction almost acts as a storytelling element, saying things about the world without actually saying anything. The implied story behind each broken down facility comes to life as you piece together what has happened through collectible diaries or critical thinking. Ironically, this lovely world comes to life the more you kill in it. Extreme violence and absolutely disturbing takedowns permeate the entire playthrough, but instead of feeling like violence for violence's sake, it feels right at home. Everyone here is trying to survive, as evidenced by the looting aspect, the narrative tones, and the enemies. So when Joel forcefully smashes a man's scarred face into a stalagmite-like shard of glass, you know he does it because he has to to get by. I'll show you. I'll show you. <laughs> The audio also plays a vital role in establishing a mood. The solemn tones of Gustavo Santuala carefully reinforce the bleak times through his soft acoustic sounds. The music doesn't stand alone since the audio design is an unspoken hero that contributes to the gameplay. Not only are the sound effects fitting and disgusting, but more than once I used my ears to deduce where an enemy was located. This is vital given how deadly some of the foes can be. Be it music, dialogue, or moment to moment sound effects, this game ensures that headphones are the best way to listen. The Last of Us is easily worth full mission price based on the campaign alone, but the online multiplayer is a fantastic addition worth getting into. Aping the survival aspects from the campaign, the multiplayer modes become less about running and gunning, and more about surviving and being strategic. Technically, you can still run and gun, but the team that plays intelligently together usually wins. Playing deliberately and allowing matches to garner a natural sense of tension sets The Last of Us multiplayer apart from the copy and paste mentality almost every other multiplayer mode has. Of course, it has all the unlock and progression aspects you'd expect, which makes the metagame a nice underlying incentive to keep playing. Multiplayer is usually shoved into franchises that don't need it, so it's that much more surprising that the competitive multiplayer here is actually as good as it is. The Last of Us is a true landmark in gaming. Storytelling and character building are among the best here, filled with jaw-dropping moments that tug heartstrings, evoke tense laughter, and downright disgust the player as they make their way through this hellhole overtaken by a wretched fungus. Barely scraping past each fight through careful resource management was a ballsy decision, but it has paid off and resulted in a unique and memorable set of mechanics. Naughty Dog's powerful journey was an exhaustive thrill ride, one that will continue to be brought up in gaming's future as an unforgettable and influential piece of software. The Last of Us gets a 10 out of 10. I find it to be one of the best games of all time, maybe the best game I've ever played. So I hope you buy the game, it's a great, fantastic piece of software. And of course, thanks for watching. You can read the whole review on the site. And thanks again. Love you and bye. Bill, they're coming to the door! Bill, you better make sure you get away with it. Right? I would have done. They're all dead! They're all fucking dead! What the hell's he yapping about? Take a breath! Who's dead? The whole crew. The 76 lookout guy, some fucking tourist. Out of my life, I'm sweating. Out of my life, I'm sweating. Pop the mile, I'm sweating.